In this video, we'll be hunting two boxes of pennies and seeing if we can make any additions or upgrades to the Hunt and Fill series. We'll of course be looking for any wheat scents from 1958 or earlier. We'll also be looking for any proofs, foreigns, errors, varieties, or any other cool things we can find, as well as pulling aside any copper and seeing how much we can fill the copper jar. And I am very excited for this hunt because we do have two enders, one per box. First box actually is a pretty nice wheat scent ender with a little bit of red luster left right there. So hopefully that will be an upgrade for the album. And box two has another wheat scent ender right here, 1946 Philly, which we do already have. But still, two wheat scent enders is a great sign for the hunt. So let's start the hunt and I'll bring you in when we have our first find. Roll two, and we already have the first find of the hunt, and it is going to be a wheat scent, and it is right here, and this one is a 1951 Denver. Next roll, and we have the second wheat scent of the hunt, right here this time. Looks really nice, it is red, but it does have a lot of green gunk on it, still might be an upgrade depending on the date. And it's a 1957D, I don't know if the one we have is nice, but this one's... Even though it has some red on it, it's not that great. It has a lot of green environmental damage on it, but still, sweet set number two of the box. Roll five, and the box is staying hot with yet another wheat scent and the first foreign of the hunt. We'll pull out the foreign first. Looks like it's going to be a Canadian scent, which it is from 1971. And then wheat scent number three is right here, and this one is a 1946 Denver. Just opened roll 7, and we have the second Canadian scent of the hunt right here. And this one is from 1977. Just opened roll 13, and I see the edge of another Canadian and another wheat scent. Let's pull up the Canadian first right here. And it is a 1963, which means this is going to be a young head, and it's in decent shape as well, so that's a great find. And the wheat scent is just a few coins after it right here. And it looks a little bit more worn. Hopefully it's pre-40s and hopefully it's a new one for the album. And it is a pre-40s. It's a 1936 out of Philly, but I'm pretty sure we already have that one in the album. It's a very common date, but still, Young had in a 1936 wheat set. That was a great roll. Roll 15, one roll away from that wheat scent ender. Just opened the roll, and we are going to have another wheat scent in this roll. This box has been pretty good for wheat scent so far, which is great. Hopefully it can continue. And here it is, and this one is a 1949 Denver. Roll 16 was that wheat scent ender. Already the sixth wheat scent of the box, which is great. Don't see anything else in the roll, but here it is. Pretty nice shape. Hopefully it's a little bit older. Oh wow, 1952 S in great shape. And we do already have this one in the album, but it's not in this great a shape. So this will definitely be an upgrade. That is a great find. Roll 19, just uncovered yet another wheat scent. And this is another one from the San Francisco Mint, 1944 S. We do already have this one in the album, but still great to see another S minted wheat scent. Roll 22, just uncovered, yet another wheat scent. This one is 1948 from Denver. Next roll, just uncovered, yet another wheat scent. This one is another one from the 40s, 1949 from Denver. Roll 25, halfway point of box one, and I just opened the roll. We have another Canadian scent right here, and this one is 1973. Just opened roll 30, and I see the edge of what I think is going to be an old Canadian scent. Right here near the beginning of the roll. I think this might be a King George Canadian scent. Let's see if it is. Oh, and I was wrong. It is just a young head, but still, it is an older Canadian. And this one, 1962. That's a great find. Just opened roll 32, and I see the edge of yet another wheat scent right here. I believe this will make 10 for the box, which is awesome. And this one is, uh, is a 1938 out of Philly. I'm just going to real quick check if we have it. And we do not have a 1938 Philly. It's not in the best shape. It does have a little damage on the date, but this will fill a spot in the album. And that is an awesome find. Just open the next roll, and we're going to have yet another Canadian scent. This one looks like it's going to be the newest of the Canadians for this box. And it is in 1985. 
just opened roll 39 and we have yet another Canadian scent. This one is in the middle of the roll right here. And this time it is in 1976. Just opened roll 46 and we're going to have another Canadian scent. This one doesn't look like it's going to be too old. It's one of the odd edged ones. And it is a 1992 commemorative. Just opened the next roll and I see the edge of another wheat scent. It has been a little bit since we've gotten a wheat scent for this box, but the beginning was hot, so we still have a good amount of wheat scent for the box. This one doesn't look like it's going to be too old, and it isn't, just a 1955 Denver. Roll 49, almost done with box one, but we do have another Canadian scent, just a couple coins into the roll, and this one is a 1974. That was all for box number one, and it was a good box. We ended up with 11 wheat cents, which is double digits, which is my goal for penny boxes, which is great, including two pre-40s, which won that 1938 will be an album edition, which is awesome. Now let's move on to box number two, and hopefully the good finds can continue. First roll of the second box is already going to have the first wheat cent of box number two, just a few coins in, and it is a 1954 Denver. Just opened roll three, and we're gonna have the first Canadian scent of box two near the back of the roll right here. And it's not too old, it's from 1979. Roll seven, and I just uncovered another wheat scent. It is reverse facing, and I somehow missed it by the edge, but it is, of course, another wheat scent. And this one is a 1948D in pretty decent shape. Just opened roll 10, and I see the edge of another Canadian scent. This one is in the middle of the roll, and it is 1976. Roll 12, and we're going to have yet another Canadian scent. This one right here, and it is 1967 commemorative bird scent. That's a great find. Roll 17, and once again, we're going to have another Canadian scent. This one's not going to be too old. And it is a 1987. Just opened roll 20, which was that wheat scent ender. Don't see anything else in the roll yet, but the ender is right here. And it is a 1946 out of Philly. Roll 22, and we're going to have another Canadian scent. This one is right here. And this time we have a 1986. Same roll, and I did miss it by the edge, but we do have another reverse facing wheat scent right here. Hopefully it's older. This one is a 1953 Denver. Still on roll 22, and just a few coins later, we have another wheat scent. This time it is another 1948 Denver. Next roll, just uncovered, yet another wheat scent. But this one is just another 1953 Denver. Roll 24, and we kind of have an oddity here. It is for just from the zinc corrosion, but we do technically have a hold coin. You can see that zinc corrosion, the hold does go completely through the coin, as you can see right there. Obviously, it's just corrosion, obviously no valley, but I do keep all the hold coins I find, and that's a pretty cool find. Just opened roll 25, halfway point of box 2, and we're going to have yet another Canadian scent. It's one of those odd edge ones, so it's not going to be too old. And it is another 1987. Just opened roll 31, and I see an edge that I don't see too often. IVSVI, that's going to be King George VI Canadian scent. Don't find these too often. This is a great find. And let's see what year it is. 1944. That's an older one. I usually get them in the late 40s, early 50s. But 1944 Canadian scent, that is an awesome find. Roll 32, just open the roll, and we're going to have another Canadian scent. This one probably not going to be as old as the last one, and it is just in 1971. Next roll, and we have another Canadian scent once again. This one is right here, and it is a 1968. Next roll once again, and this time we don't have a Canadian scent. We have another wheat scent. Didn't catch it by the edge right away because it is a little bit environmentally damaged, but it's still a wheat scent. Great find. And it is a 1945 out of Philly. 
Next roll once again, and the fines are going to continue. This time we just have another Canadian cent right in the middle of the roll. And we have a 1981. Roll 37, and we have another odd find. Just hunting through the roll. This is really damaged memorial scent, and I flipped it over. And we do have a Kennedy counter stamp. We have a Lincoln Kennedy penny. This is by far the worst condition one I found. Worth nothing besides the copper value, but still going to set it aside because it does have a counter stamp on it, and that's a pretty odd find. Just open the next roll, and we're going to have yet another Canadian scent. And this one is in the back of the roll right here, and it is a 1986. Just opened roll 39, and I did catch the edge of another wheat scent, and it is right here. A little bit hard to see, and hopefully it's a little older. It looks like it could be a little older, probably from the 40s though. And it is, and it's a 1944S. We do already have it, but always great to see an S-minted wheat scent. Same roll, and I just uncovered something that I'm not too sure about. You guys can let me know what you think in the comments, but I did just uncover this 1970S, and it does have kind of a mirror finish on it, so I don't know if it's a proof or not because it also has a lot of scratches all over it, so it might just be polished up. Its edge isn't thick like a proof would be, so I'm kind of leaning towards that this is just a polished normal 1970S. But it also kind of looks like a proof, so I'm not too sure. You guys can let me know what you think in the comments. But either way, that is an odd find. Roll 40, just uncovered. Yet another wheat scent. It is just another one from the 50s, but we have a 1952 minted in Denver. Just opened roll 41, and I see the edge of yet another wheat scent. We've gotten quite a few wheat scents in this hunt, which is great. Those two wheat scent enders were definitely a good sign. And this wheat scent is pretty nice, probably going to be in the 50s. And it is a last year, 1958 Denver. Same roll, and I just uncovered yet another wheat scent. This time it is from the 40s, and it is a 1944 from Denver. Just opened roll 44, and once again we have another wheat scent. It's popped out in the back of the roll, one, one away from being an ender. And this time we have a 1946 D. Just opened roll 48, and I see another wheat scent edge. Just a couple coins in, right there. And this one does look a little worn. Probably going to be in the 40s, though. And it is a 1942 Philly. Both penny bucks have been hunted, so let's go over the fines. We ended up with 8 1959s, 22 estimates, and 25 2009s. Foreigns, of course, all are Canadian, and we ended up with 20, including a few older ones, which were 1967 Bird Scent, which is pretty cool to see, and two young heads, a 1962 and 1963, and the best of all the Canadians, a 1944 King George, which was an awesome find. And we also got a few miscellaneous finds. We got this technically hold 1994, even though it's just from Zincrot, still pretty interesting. And then we got that 1970S, which does kind of look like a proof, but I'm pretty sure it's just polished. There's a lot of lines going across it, and it doesn't really have a proof-like strike, and it's not that thick. So it's, I'm pretty sure it's just a polished coin. And we got that really beat up 1972 Lincoln Kennedy Penny, which even though it's pretty rough shape, still a pretty cool find. And then Wheat Sense, we ended up with 24 for the two boxes, which is great. Definitely what I like to see in a hunt. And two of them were pre-40s, a 1936 and a 1938, both from Philly. And I'm pretty sure that 1938 will be an addition, which was awesome. And lastly, for copper, we pretty much filled the copper jar, which is about usual for how I do in two boxes, which is great. So now, let's go through the coins, see if we have any additions or upgrades, and I'll bring you in with an album update. Just finished adding everything to the album and doing all the upgrades, and here is how the album looks now. We did have one addition in this hunt, which was that 1938 Philly. Not in the best shape, but still always great to add a spot. Still have not had an episode with no additions, which is awesome, and I hope that can continue. We got a few upgrades as well, including this really nice 1952S, which is great. And for the memorials, that 1962 was bugging me that we didn't have one, so I just pulled one aside in decent shape in this hunt. 
Obviously, a lot worse compared to the coins around it, but hopefully we'll be able to get an upgrade for that one soon. Overall, this was a successful Penny Hunt and Phil album episode.